Now, Wednesday was Sickle Cell Awareness Day. The disease is an inherited genetic abnormality that affects red blood cells. About 300,000 babies are born with the disease in sub-Saharan Africa every year. Joining us in studio to talk uh, more on this is uh, Nabila uh, Pirbai, who was diagnosed at the age of seven. Uh, Nabila, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, f first, tell us about uh, sickle cell disease. What is it? Sickle cell disease is a chronic blood disorder. It's passed on from your parents. It's not contagious in any way. Um, normally, your red blood cells is round in shape. With sickle cell disease, the shape is irregular, yep. and it's almost like a crescent moon. Okay. And uh, now, are there different types of sickle cell uh, diseases? Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. um, so there are people that just carry the trait for sickle cell and don't actually have the disease. And in order for a person to get it, both parents um, need to, to have the trait and pass it on to their child. Okay. So carriers are not affected by the disease but someone that gets both copies of the gene and will have the disease. Which is a sickle cell trait. What does a person, how, how can you find out if you actually have sickle cell trait? So you go for an ordinary blood test mm -hmm. and they can see whether you have it, whether you are a carrier or not, or you have, they count the number of abnormal cells in your blood and they'll, um, that can determine whether you have the disease or not. Now, now you were diagnosed at the age of seven. What symptoms were you exhibiting? Okay, so I was diagnosed at the age of seven. Um, when I was an infant, I showed no symptoms of the disease. When I started school, um, schooling um, increased the physical demands placed on my body. Then I started suffering with headaches, um, fatigue, weak, chronic weakness, um, stomach pain, and I used to throw up often. Uh, my parents first would tell me that, no, you know, you're too small, you don't even know what a headache is. Um, until I got really sick, um, a high fever, I couldn't even walk, um, that's when I went to the hospital. At first they thought I had leukemia, but it took a month to diagnose, um, and then they diagnosed me with sickle cell. I had an enlarged spleen. So your spleen is the organ in your body that filters out your red blood cells. Mm -hmm. um, because our blood cells are irregularly shaped, they die off quicker than the normal blood cells. So your spleen works overactively to clean out and filter the blood cells. Um, and that helps them to diagnose the disease. Okay. Uh, now, living with the... Uh the SCD, how's that been and you know, uh, how do you go about doing that? It's a whole lifestyle change. Um, when I was small it was very difficult at first um, because I was diagnosed in 1999. The um, technology wasn't advanced so it wasn't as easy to access and share information and healthcare professionals were also still learning about the disease because it's one of those rare conditions. Um, so it was very hard, difficult to distinguish, you know, what symptoms were part of the disease and what was something new. It was difficult to explain to other people, especially my teachers at school, what the disease was. And I was always missing school. I always had to be in hospital, go for checkups. Um, and it was always like this backlog or this challenge that I faced of missing school, yeah. coming back, catching up on work, and then still trying to, to be normal and be Because obviously you struggled to do a lot of uh, physical activities yes. and so forth, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, because of the weakness and because of our blood being irregularly shaped, um, we don't carry enough iron, we don't carry enough oxygen, so fatigue's a real problem. Um, and then also because of the enlarged spleen, um, doctors said that it's a, I cannot do um, any physical activity because I'll always be at risk of that spleen rupturing. Um, okay. How prevalent is SCD in Africa? So in, South, in Africa, on the African continent itself, at least one in 400 people have sickle cell disease. So it's actually quite common in the African population, but it's not common enough. Okay, why? Um, so there's no newborn screening for sickle cell disease, so children um, generally get really sick before they diagnose. It's not one of that go-to diseases that doctors will first test for. Um, and that creates a problem because people first need to get really sick and then be on mm. treatment instead of early intervention and early treatment to help the standard of life. Now you say SED originated in Africa, or that is the, the belief. Yes. Tell us why yes. is, why so is, why they is that so? So they said that it was like a selective ad adaption that um, the red blood cells um, were formed or had an irregular shape and that was to prevent uh, malaria from being passed on. Um, so the malaria, so people with sickle cell uh, be less likely to get malaria and they think that it's adaption yeah. um, for that.
Okay, fantastic. All right. Uh, but uh, you're coping. Everything is fine. And uh, for a person with SCD, you can have a, a, a full life. Is that possible? Yes. Um, especially now that uh, medical treatment has improved, yep. it's still a whole lifestyle change. Like we get a lot of pain, lots of inflammation. Mm. Um, you have to eat. You have to have a diet um, very high in nutritional value, um, vitamin C, B, iron. You have to yep. monitor yourself, go regularly for checkups. Um, and to have a support group and a strong support system and know that you know asking for help is a strength it's not a weakness on 100 percent nabila pirbai thank you so much diagnosed uh, with scd at the age of seven joining us in the studio just talking uh, about her personal experience uh, with scd as well and also its prevalence on the african continent